Call me old school, but I'm still a big believer that if you're in your 20s or your 30s, then financially buying your own house is one of the best things that you can do. I see too many people pissing away money because they don't have a mortgage to restrict their spendings. So in today's video, I wanna run you through the First Home Super Saver Scheme, which is a bit of a mouthful, but basically it's a way that you can save a deposit for your first home tax effectively. I'm gonna run you through the benefits, I'm gonna run you through the things you need to consider, and I'm gonna help you determine if it's a good idea for your situation. Now there is a fair bit to go over in today's video, so make yourself comfortable, get yourself a coffee, and let's get started. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor, and if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button because I post videos on how you can do more with your money. So when it comes to buying your first home, there are two things you need to consider from a finance perspective. That's your serviceability and your deposit. Your serviceability is basically how much you can borrow, and that's largely gonna be determined by how much you earn, if you have any existing debts, and if you have any financial dependents. From my experience, for first home buyers, serviceability isn't normally much of an issue. It's normally a young couple, both working full time with no kids. So normally the amount that they can borrow is actually okay. Where I find that a lot of first home buyers fall short is in their deposit. The banks want to see that you are able to save money. And people tend to struggle with this. And that's where the first home super saver scheme comes in. This scheme allows first home buyers to use their superannuation fund to help save a deposit for their first house. And it works like this. You make voluntary contributions of up to 15,000 per financial year, no more than 30,000 in total, into your superannuation. By treating these contributions as a concessional superannuation contribution, you can claim a tax deduction for the amount contributed to your super, which is obviously gonna save you tax. This will mean that you pay tax at the superannuation rate of 15% instead of your marginal tax rate, which can be as high as 45% plus Medicare levy. Paying less tax means you build a bigger deposit quicker. The two ways of making concessional contributions are to either make the contribution yourself and lodge a notice of intention to claim form with your super fund, or get your employer to make the contributions on your behalf under a salary sacrifice arrangement. You can also treat contributions as a non-concessional or after-tax contribution and not pay 15% super contributions tax on it. However, this would mean you can't claim a personal tax deduction, so best stick to the concessional contributions. Then, when it comes time to withdraw the savings to buy a house, you apply to the ATO for a first home super saver scheme determination, which can easily be done through your MIGA. When the funds are released, you'll get the contributed amount, less the 15% contributions tax, plus an assumed earnings rate. This will then be taxable at your marginal tax rate, less a 30% tax offset. And if you watched my last video, you'll understand how a tax offset works. The ATO will withhold some of the tax from your savings so you aren't slogged with a big tax bill at the end of the financial year. Now that all sounds pretty confusing and to be honest, it is. There hasn't been a massive uptake in people using this scheme simply because a lot of people don't understand it. So let me simplify it for you and say that if you are working and you are earning more than $20,000 per annum, then you should consider using this scheme as it can potentially save you tax. If you earn less than $20,000 per annum, then there's probably not a whole lot of benefits of using this scheme as you don't pay a lot of tax anyway. Got it so far? Okay, so now that you've got a basic understanding of how it all works, let's look at the pros and the cons of using this scheme. Starting off with the pros. Now, in my mind, there are two big pros of using this scheme. The first and obvious pro is that it can save you tax which will help you build a bigger deposit quicker. The second is that this scheme forces you to use your savings for a first home purchase. I see a lot of people who start saving a little bit of money, then they go on a holiday or they buy a car or they spend their money somehow and it's, that's how people stay in the red trap. Under this scheme, you'll be putting money aside into your superannuation and you can't access that money unless it's gonna be used to buy your first house. If you don't buy your first house, then it's stuck there. Now let's look at the cons of the scheme. And a lot of these things aren't really negatives, 
they're more just things that you need to be aware of before you enter into this arrangement. Firstly, you can only contribute up to $15,000 per financial year and $30,000 in total. Now this applies to each individual, so if you're buying a house with another first home buyer, then combined you can do $30,000 per financial year and $60,000 in total. Secondly, if you don't buy a house, then that money is staying inside your superannuation for retirement. Third, it can be a lot slower accessing your savings. So basically, as we discussed, you have to make a determination to the ATO for your savings, and then it normally takes between 15 and 25 business days before you actually get the money. Four, you can't put an offer in on a house until you have made a first home super saver scheme determination with the ATO. If you do, then chances are you won't be able to use your savings for the deposit. It is best practice to apply to release the funds before putting in any offers on houses or signing any build contracts. And then we have 12 months from when the funds are released in order to buy your first house. Now, if you don't find a house within 12 months, then you simply ask for an extension from the ATO. Number five is before you make any contributions under this scheme, call up your superannuation fund and make sure they will actually release the funds under the first home super saver scheme. And lastly, there are superannuation contribution cap limits each financial year that you must work within. So make sure you understand those cap limits and work within them. And you also need to be eligible to contribute. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, the first home super saver scheme. Not the easiest scheme to get your head around, but I do think it can have a lot of benefits for the right person. As always, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're a first home buyer, then please give this video a thumbs up. And in the comments section below, let me know what other topics in regards to buying your first house you would like me to cover. Ah, oh, and before I go, just for full disclosure, the picture that I use in the thumbnail for this video that's not actually my first house, that's my second house. And the reason that I use that picture is because when we purchased our first house and we went to take a picture in front of the sold sign, the sign was gone. It was, it was gone, they'd taken it away. So if you're a real estate agent watching this, then make sure you give your first home buyers that opportunity to take a picture in front of the sold sign because I just think, I just, I just think it's, it's, it's a right, you, you have to do it. Anyway, I'm Waffling. Thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next one.